took my they took all my gavels. They took the one from GSBA. I can't find one. So anyway, we'll call the order the uh, work session for January. I'm sorry, June 23rd, 2022, Coffee County Board of Education. Um, this time, I believe the purpose for the education. Yes, sir. You would. Please follow the prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to gather and do the work of the Coffee County School System for our boys and girls in Coffee County. And Lord, just guide direct us as we meet here this evening and just uh, bless the work that we do and just put a hedge of protection around our loved ones and our community. And just, uh, we just give you thanks for everything you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, at this time I need a motion for the adoption of the, of the agenda. Alpha motion. Ms. Johnson, motion. Second. Second, Mr. Wade. Any discussion on the agenda? All right, all in favor? All right. At this time, we have uh, Miss uh, Amy Bynum here uh, with her assistant principal, who is going to provide a a presentation to us, just an update on the activities at Eastside Elementary School. So, Thank welcome, Miss Bynum. Thank you, Dr. Lee. I'm Amy Bynum, the principal at Eastside, and I asked Miss Catherine Litter, our assistant principal, to be with me today. Um, it's truly a team effort at Eastside, and so I wanted her to be recognized as well. We put together a PowerPoint or a video presentation for you. And um, when COVID hit, we we really had some huge gaps. We had over 200 kids that stayed at home that year and most of the next year, and so we're really proud of the growth that we're showing. And I'll just let the presentation do the talk for you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I'm Amy Bynum, Principal of Eastside Elementary. Welcome to our school. There's no I'm team, and that's certainly the case here at Eastside Elementary School. I have a phenomenal team that surrounds me every day, and we could not do what we do here at Eastside without the team that I have. I want to thank the board office, especially for giving us the dean of students this year, Mr. Martellus Curtis. We have our assistant principal, Ms. Catherine Woodard. Um, our academic coach, Ms. Shay Hare, our counselor, um, Heidi Welch, and they all do a phenomenal job every day to help us. So thank you for providing us those supports when we ask for it. And throughout this video, they're going to be highlighting some of the great things we have going on this side. Thank you. I am Catherine Woodard, Assistant Principal for Instruction here at ESA. We have had an outstanding year. I could possibly say this is my um, best year yet. We, we've had so many awesome things going on at Eastside. Um, just to name a few, we've, we've been able to have both virtual and in-person family engagement events, both virtual and in-person honors days. The families have really enjoyed the combination of the two. Um, they definitely enjoyed the in-person uh, a little more than the, the online, but they're working with us and we've tried to make those in, as engaging and and spotlighting their students and um, their achievements you know as we could so we're, we're thankful for those opportunities we've also made a lot of progress towards meeting our goals and um, for our students um, very explicit professional learning has taken place um, and then the classroom implementation and instruction that's come from that has um, definitely helped us get towards our goals one specific thing we, we have a heavy focus um, from our school improvement plan uh, you know, we want to make our students be successful readers, and so we have to we have to teach them how to do that. And it's very explicit instruction, um, and there's a way that we can do that. Um, and so, over the last few years, we have uh, had a heavy focus on the stairway to proficiency, um, and we are seeing more and more students becoming um, on track grade level readers. That doesn't happen overnight. That doesn't happen in one school year. Um, it is a collective effort. Um, and so we are thrilled that our stairway to proficiency, we're seeing the, the effects of the last couple of years. They consistently had it in kindergarten, consistently had it in first, consistently had it in second. Um, and we are sending our students from second to third grade as readers, and, and that's just amazing. Hello, I'm Shay Hare. I'm the academic coach and family engagement coordinator at Eastside Elementary School. At Eastside this year, we focused on building literacy skills through the implementation of the DI box and the stairway to proficiency. This is a research-based instructional practice that comes from how to plan differentiated reading instruction written by Sharon Walpole and Mike McKenna. 
To monitor progress on the stairway, a Google Sheet was shared with each grade level. Every four to five weeks, grade level PLCs met to analyze student progress. Students' names were typed into the sheet according to where they were on the stairway to proficiency. After the first month, teachers used green, blue, and red icons next to the students' names to indicate whether they had grown, stayed in the same section, or regressed on, in their progress on the stairway. At the beginning of the year in kindergarten, we had 5% of our students reading on grade level. Our teachers used the DI Box lessons to provide direct instruction in differentiated small groups to develop our students' skills. One teacher even made personalized fry sight word rings for her kindergarten students. Did you know that just 300 of the fry sight words make up 65% of all printed material? Just learning 300 sight words is a great accomplishment for any first grader, let alone a kindergarten student. We had a kindergarten student who didn't stop there. You may recognize Kylie from Facebook. When she mastered 850 sight words, we posted her picture on our digital marquee and then posted a picture of her beside the marquee on Facebook. Now, if you saw Kylie on Facebook, you were not alone. This post reached over 4,300,000 people, had over 550,000 engagements, 23,000 likes, 37,000 shares, and nearly 1,000 comments. Her post went so viral that WALB even picked up her story and did a segment about her on their evening news. Today's good news, the Eastside Elementary School of Douglas is celebrating one of their brightest students, Kylie. Kylie made the accomplishment of knowing 850 sight words. The school congratulated her with a spot on their entrance billboard that says, quote, Kylie knows 850 sight words and she's only in kindergarten. So we here at WLB wish her a very, a very happy reading and congratulations. Kylie was not the only kindergarten kindergartner that had success at Eastside. 85% of our students ended the year on grade level or above, and 100% of our kindergartners showed growth in reading. Our year in first grade began with no students reading on grade level, but through the dedicated work of our teachers and students, we ended the year with 82% of kids on grade level or above, and 100% of students showing growth in reading. Our students even got excited about helping others. This student earned a teacher's helper pass for good behavior. He wanted to help his classmates learn how to read, so during their flex groups, he flashed sight words, sight work cards to his group. In second grade, we began the year with no students reading on or above grade level. With our teachers using differentiated small group instruction with the DI box, and the Comprehensive Reading Solutions Framework during shared reading, we were able to increase the reading achievement of 99% of our second grade students. Our second graders especially enjoyed flashlight reading using fingertip flashlights as they choral, echo, whisper, and partner read their weekly stories. This helped them to focus on each word as they read the passages. We began the year with 23% of our third graders reading on grade level or above. These students were able to choose comfy spots around the classroom to sit with their reading partners for reading fluency practice. By the end of the year, 85% of our third graders were out of the DI box. When the year began, 52% of our fourth grade students still needed targeted phonics instruction during differentiated small group reading time. By the end of the year, we had 81% of fourth grade students out of the DI box as they had mastered these skills. Our students benefited from focused phonics instruction and practice reading at their instructional level with the Accelerated Reader Program. The AR prizes were just a bonus. Fifth grade started the year with 73% of students reading on grade level or above. However, this left 27% lacking foundations in primary literacy skills. Teachers again provided targeted instruction and multiple opportunities to practice. Our student council members in fifth grade initiated the Helping Hands School Service Project. Each month, they worked to serve others. During one month's service work, our student council members went into pre-K, kindergarten, first and second grade classrooms to assist both students and teachers with various tasks related to building literacy skills. 
This service project included reading aloud to the class, working as one-on-one -on -one literacy tutors, and even preparing decodable text for small group reading instruction. By the end of the year, 97% of fifth grade students were out of the DI box and 43% were reading on grade level or above. We are so proud of the hard work done by our students and teachers this school year. We know that using a systematic and explicit instructional approach to teaching reading can and will result in student achievement. We look forward to continuing this work next school year. Also, we, we've had fun with family engagement on career days. We asked <coughs> specifically Eastside families and local community members to record um, little blurbs about their job, what you do, do you use any special tools, do you have equipment that you work with, um, what, what's the day in the life of a RN or a police officer or a local farmer. Um, and we had such an awesome turnout. We were absolutely thrilled with the number of people who said, yes, I'll record a two or three minute video. So, we designated a day here at Eastside for career day. Students dressed up as what they wanted to be at home when they grew up. And this gives them a goal to pursue. And we want our students to have goals. We want them to, to know that um, they can be whatever they want to be. And it starts here. It starts you know, at the home and at Eastside and in these foundational years. We have such an impact on students' lives and, um, and they have an impact on ours. So we're super thankful for that. Um, again, we, we've had such an awesome year at Eastside. I'm, I'm proud of our staff. I'm proud of our students. I'm so thankful for our Eastside families, our school governance council, um, the community partners that come through every single time. Um, we are Eastside and we are coffee. Hello, I'm Martellus Curtis, Dean of Students at Eastside Elementary. This year, we had a goal to maintain our five-star school climate rating and also decrease the office discipline referrals by 20%. Some of the things that helped us be successful in reaching our goal included conferencing with students, contacting parents, utilizing the behavior modification modules, also known as the aid modules that the school district provided for us. Our staff members taught the school-wide expectations throughout the entire school year. We developed a mentoring group called Distinguished Youth with Purpose, and most importantly, we build positive and meaningful relationships. Hi, I'm Julia Williams and I'm the student council president. And I'm London Harold, the student council vice president. We have been involved in many community service projects. We participated in a video for our online reading family event, Satilla Regional Library, where we walk students how to visit and check out books from our local library. We also prepared all of the reading passports for students at USA. We served as help as classroom helpers on special event days, such as field days and honors days. We put the flag up and took it down each day. We also read the school sort each morning. We wrapped Christmas gifts for students at Eastside that needed Christmas. Could we all and contribute ideas for PDIs in the end of the year celebration? We thank our business partners for having sponsored our digital sign. We love it, and it allows to showcase the positive thing is happening at Eastside. We are thankful for the opportunity to serve our school. We love Eastside and cannot wait to sort at Coffee Middle School. The students help us say every day, if no one has told them today that they love you, we love you, I love you, and you belong to us, and you are capable of doing great things. Remember to sort today by following our school-wide PBIS expectations. Show respect every day, obey safety rules as the way, act responsibly in all you do, and react positively for many weeks. Have a blessed day.
Next is the financial report. We have uh, Ms. Yall here, uh, the finance director, to present the financial report. Ms. Yall? Yes, First report we see is our monthly financials as of the month of May 31st, 2022. Um, we began um, this fiscal year in July 21 with a fund equity balance of $22,765,555.80. As of May 31st, our fund equity is at $26,891,075.60. Um, we're beginning to you know begin our closing processes um, this month to close out the year um, wrapping up some purchase orders and things like that so that one. this is our comparison report for the past um, comparison four years here and again you see our fund equity the $26,891,075.60. If you can look through the past um, several years, it's it's went down as from last month, but it, that's kind of compares to the other previous years. They have um, decreased slightly. The report here is our report um, of our revenue, detailed revenues and expenditures of the school system. The first portion is our revenues. So as of the month of May, the revenues were at $62,846,062.81. The expenditures for the um, as of the month of May or at $58,720,543.01. And we're beginning to close out most of our purchase orders this month. The report here is our monthly SPLOSS report. So for the month of May, our revenue was $664,666.97. Up from last year, but down a little bit from the previous month. There, board members, any questions? For All right. well, thank you, Miss Yall. The next item on the agenda is the FY23 family connection contract. We have uh, the family connections director here. Uh, Ms. April Thompson. Any questions about the family connection? If there's no objection, we'll place this contract on the consent agenda for approval at the monthly meeting. ESSER funding. We have Dr. Christina Tucker here this evening who's going to give us an update on our ESSER funding. And of course, this is the funding that we received uh, for the pandemic and moving through uh, addressing the needs after the pandemic. So, Dr. Tucker. We budgeted funds under um, ESSER funding for summer school learning, and we're making the recommendation that we amend that budget to allow us to pay for the bus drivers and the cost of fuel to run the summer program. Um, it's just an easy amendment to make, and also, um, just remind the, our stakeholders that we have an ESSER survey um, posted on the system website that allows them to provide input as far as the budgets and um, the spending of the ESSER funds are concerned. Uh -huh. Thank you. Softball program purchase. Uh, I'm recommending that we approve the purchase of the All-Star Ace Hit System from Joiner Technologies as <coughs> uh, This is uh, a result of a, a donation that was made to the softball program uh, 
uh, to the athletic department and because the athletic department actually has those funds uh, and it's going to be a purchase through the athletic department we need to have the board approve this purchase because it reaches the threshold it's $25,798 uh, so we do need board approval on this but we would blessed to have uh, a donation of approximately $50,000 to the athletic department for the softball program uh, Eddie Anderson, who's a graduate of Culty High, lives in Tennessee, has uh, developed a friendship with the gentleman who owns the Jimmy John's Subway uh, chain. And uh, the gentleman has donated $50,000 to the softball program. So we would need more approval to make that purchase. If there's no objection to <coughs> place that on the consent agenda. And then there was around 30,000 more that's going to go towards the structure to improve the hidden, hidden facility. We were already improving the hidden facility, but this is going to allow us to do even more. So we're very grateful to Mr. Anderson and his friend who uh, made this donation to the softball club and Coach Hughes for uh, having the foresight to move forward with all this. So good thing for our young people. Uh, policies. We've got uh, a number of policies on the table. These are a result of legislation that was passed. So as a result of that legislation, we're going to ask the board to approve these policies. And uh, anyways, you can see the policies there, IEDA, and you can so this is the first read on these policies, and uh, we received samples from Georgia School Board Association, and we drafted these policies based on their suggestions for these these uh, policies to be in compliance with the new state law. But do understand these could change; they'll be sitting on the table for the next month, and we could amend them or change them prior to the final approval. But we want to go ahead and get these out there to y'all. So these are not for approval tonight, just the first read. All right, eBoard Solutions Multi-Factor Authentication. eBoard Solutions or Assembly is changing their process for logging in. And uh, we want to just, while we have you all together, just make it simple and go ahead and tell you about it. And if there's any questions about how we'll do it, then Logan's here and he can answer any questions. So, well, we got y'all all here. We figured we'd take advantage of it. So, multi-step authentication. Yes, sir. When you sign, click sign in on assembly, there will be an additional step to verify that it's you. And so, Robin and I looked through the process. It uh, seems fairly straightforward. Uh, it'll require you to select a few account recovery questions, like you know, what city were you born or. Where'd you have your first job? So you'll pick a couple of those and we can help you through the process as you go. It should be pretty simple uh, to take care of. And did you have that handout, Robin? Yeah. Robin prepared a handout. When we first saw it, we went through and it was really just a couple minutes to read through it. Uh, but it is a good cybersecurity practice to have an authentication process. Uh, when you sign in to when you sign in the programs. And it says here if we don't enable it now it'll be automatically turned on uh, on July 2nd. So we should be able to work through this next week. But before we did it we wanted to make sure y'all were aware and any further directions will be sent out at that time. Is there any questions about two-step authentication? All right, if there's no questions about that, then we will move forward with an executive session. I do have a need for an executive session to meet with the board about uh, personnel and the personnel list and approving the personnel list and the evaluation and employment of, of employees. Also, school safety planning 
and real estate. All right, at this time I need a motion to exit the executive session. Okay. Exit to executive session. Mm -hmm. Mr. Howard. Second. Second, Ms. Johnson. Any discussion? All right. All right. Oh, then Real quick, the board, I need a motion to exit the executive session. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Yeah.